Okay, so the external um, work on the book has turned out really well, and I'm going to um, not show too much of that at this point. Uh, we can uh, wait on that, but we do have internal work to do still. So the um, inside covers look a bit of a mess at the moment. We've obviously got the fabric and the leather all still visible. Uh, this repair that we did to the bottom edge as well is visible. Um, so we're going to do some work to create some really nice marbled paste downs and end papers here. And we were lucky in that um, the original bindings actually had complete sets of free end papers available, which we kept. So we're in a position to actually recycle this um, for this volume. Now, at the moment, the page is obviously way too big. Um, in actual fact, we're going to get both sides, both the cover and the free end paper out of one page here. And this page is obviously attached in the wrong way. We're going to need this uh, blank paper to be attached down the middle here as opposed to uh, along the top edge. So we're going to have to trim this um, before we start work. So um, now you can measure this any which way. Um, we obviously want a piece of paper that's going to fit here and well look at that I mean coincidentally this bit of paper that I grabbed here just happens to be exactly the right dimension across here for what we need which uh, isn't what I expected but I guess that's going to make life um, easier so what we're going to do is trim off this edge where it's all a bit sort of um, damaged uh, to this dimension so Going to measure. Yeah, that's right there. And same thing here. So uh, then put this in the guillotine. We're going to get a nice straight edge as a result. So there we go. Um, so this should now be the right dimension to use here. Yeah, that looks great. That's going to be good. Now, obviously, both these pieces of paper are way too long to be both put down here and come out here. Um, we can trim them both later. It doesn't matter if they sort of stick out a little bit when we glue them in. Um, but this in particular um, is far bigger than it needs to be because this is only going to be one page. So we're in a position where we can actually take off quite a bit of this and save it for other uses and still have a, a, um, a substantial tongue of paper available to support. So I'm going to put this to one side because I think that's going to be useful for some other repairs that we're going to do. Okay, so how's this gonna work? We're gonna paste this in like so. And um, how we're gonna do it is this piece is just going to be, make sure it's the right way up like this, secured like this, so stuck underneath. So it will be a, um, a free, end paper as well. So basically this will be a free page, this will be a free page, uh, and this this will be uh, stuck down. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get gluing. So how I'm going to do this is this entire, this is the um, marble paper, so we know we're going to have to glue this section and we want to put this section here, about there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to Make sure this is open and unsealed. There we go. That glue is getting a bit more viscous in its old age. So I'm just going to do that. And we can adjust this shortly. But for now, I'm going to put that there. And then 
what I'm going to do is glue this entire surface here. So hopefully that's in shot. Just go all the way down. Put a good dot up there. Gonna put an extra bit into that fabric there. So I'm gonna put now going to start at this edge to make sure that this is exactly where I want it. Yeah, that looks good. And then using this stick, I'm just gonna work it back slowly until, just open the book a bit more, everything's in place. Now, of course I can slip and slide things around a little bit. until I've got everything where I want and slowly I'm going to get more aggressive with pushing the pages back. Okay, I'm going to get something just to help here with the final piece. So I've just gone and gotten this kitchen tool that has a really nice, very blunt edge. I think it's used for cakes or something. So what I'm going to do is just I want to get this fold as far back as realistically I can. Yeah, I think that's about the way. So So I've got both the um, blank end paper there and the marbled end paper. Currently too long, doesn't matter. We can actually trim that at our leisure later on. So now we're gonna do exactly the same for the back as the next step. Okay, so both are now in place. Um, key things to note. The first thing is check Check that this edge here hasn't sort of been tempted to sort of slide its way up, uh, which can often happen as you sort of close the book, just over the tension, that looks about right. And the other thing is, if you look at the ends, hopefully this stays focused, there you go. Um, this, you want these to be set as far back as possible. So you have this sort of, sort of bead here that's been sort of squeezed and pinched by the covers. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want uh, on both sides. So what that does is it means this is all the way back and that joint is going to be very easy to um, close up with an extra little bit of paper um, when all said and done. So what I've done here is I'm going to just put a little bit of absorbent paper and what all this does is it just stops the pages themselves from sticking together from any excess glue and uh, then once that's set we're going to go about doing some trimming so this is a relatively because this book is small and I've got a long bladed pair of scissors it's actually relatively easy to trim these neatly and including these top edges here uh, in a way that um, sort of doesn't look messy so for example this edge here That'll be relatively easy to trim with scissors. Um, gets a lot trickier um, if you do this with a large book and you have an error, so you have to be much more careful there. But a small book like this is relative, relatively forgiving. Okay, so trimming the papers has worked out quite well. And what I've just done here is just keeping this um, absorbent kitchen roll in place. I've just put a bulldog clip there. So I can keep that out of view. Now, if you're probably looking at that thinking, well, hang on a second, what's this? That looks awfully like a loose page, isn't it? 
then you'd be right. Um, when I first received uh, this, I checked collation, and sure enough, when I got to this point, which is right at the end of the book, it's actually leaf um, 562, I realized it was loose. And furthermore, I noted that leaf 561 was absent. So, um, let me go this way. 562, 560 rather, 562, there we go. 560 was uh, loose and 561 was missing, that's 562. So I was able to actually do some research online and uh, if I just tilt this back very slightly. Um, the internet's a wonderful thing. And uh, what I was able to do was to actually locate this page. So this is a facsimile copy of the page that I obtained from, um, as you can see here, the, uh, uh, the Bavarian State Library. They, someone had the great foresight in 2009 to digitize the um, 1598 edition of this book. And just by great fluke, uh, the pagination of the 1586 and the 1598 uh, versions are actually identical. Question, how do I know that? Well, if we go back to the Renaissance and into the 16th century, what printers would do, and they did this a bit later as well, is at the bottom, they'd actually put the first word or part word of the next page at the bottom of the previous page. So the word modo, for example, appears there. And the previous page is there. And that was because the actual numbering often went horribly wrong. There was, uh, it was very easy to make errors if you were a printer with the, with the page or leaf numbering. And so I was able to look at the bottom here and you see the word ma, and sure enough, Madalina, there it just leads off right there. So um, that was what gave me comfort that, uh, okay, I, um, I've got the uh, right pagination, everything's in order. Um, so that gave me a lot of confidence with this. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to very conservatively glue this just with an extra tiny little scrap of paper here on this edge. And then I'm gonna locate this in the book. And this page does look very different. It looks, it is modern paper. It looks like a facsimile and I've said it's a facsimile, I think. Transparency and openness is a critical thing in everything to do with books. So, um, you know, this um, this book did not completely make collation. There was this one issue, but uh, I'm gonna deal with it here with this uh, facsimile. And I should add, the vendor is busy looking for the missing page and uh, they may well find it and hopefully um, we'll be able to locate it and put it in the book as well. Okay, so here we have Folio 560. Facsimile Folio 561, just attached with a, a fold of paper that we harvested from the um, end papers that we just attached. So all I'm going to do is apply an extremely thin bead here. I actually don't want this repair to be particularly um, Permanent, hopefully, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that the original uh, um, one gets found. But, uh, uh, and I certainly don't want to use an enormous amount of glue in this book. So, there we go, there's 562. So, I'm going to slide this in. Now, the trick here is to get this guy far enough back that the pages don't appear proud from the book here and that's, that's the bit that could be slightly tricky but I think I may just have achieved it. There we go. That is going to be good enough. Um, the facsimile page obviously doesn't have the turned corners that the other book, the rest of the, uh, uh, this end of the book does. Um, Trim it slightly so it doesn't sort of stick out quite so obviously. Okay, well, 
it is what it is. So, um, it'd be lovely if we had the original page, but we don't. Uh, okay. So this book is now, albeit with a facsimile, uh, this book is now complete and meets collation. So we're just gonna let it dry for a little moment here and then we can uh, conclude and uh, reveal and show what the book looks like.